Hello, every person. Um, we're adjusting my screen. We are back, and this week, um, we're going to be thinking about how to think more good. Uh, but before all of that, let's think about how to think more um, promotion. I don't know. I, don't know th I have to thank the patrons first. I promised myself that I would do that, so... Um, <clears throat> at uh, at our junior scientist, the only one, our precious Bab, Chance Morgan, um, who we deeply thank for showing up to class and gets an A for, for uh, participation. Then over here, our lab partners, we have three. We got Andrea, Nicole, and Jane. They're all working very hard to uh, pick up the slack for each of these little lab projects, um, which we've all received Fs on so far, but I'm hoping that at the end of this unit, Y'all will get at least, at least not a D. Um, oh, right. I f forgot. We have the our Lord Admiral of uh, R&D Research. That's Rin, um, who is, rest in peace, still dead. And then, of course, we have the Empress of the Lab, the one who makes it possible for us to be here in the first place, Donna Carroll, um, who, statistically speaking, is probably going to win tonight's raffle. Speaking of tonight's raffle, um, we're going to be doing a graphic guide to logic spelled the way it's supposed to and not how I've been spelling it. So better hop on that Patreon subscription if y'all want a book. You've only got what, like probably an hour, but actually longer because these things always go over. Okay, let's do it. Tucker, what are we doing today? <laughs> oh, we're doing logic and um, going to cover, I guess, a little bit of the logical fallacies, but... I think more with the focus on applications and especially in this day and age, like, so you see someone arguing on the internet, what do you do? Yeah. Should you listen? Should you respond? How do you think? I mean, so, <laughs> only yelling, no response. Right. I'm trying to pull so, up the, the list. You keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll stall for you. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of, um, instead of, I guess, going into some of the details of some of the formal fallacies, which could be a whole episode of its own, it's more how to rec uh, recognize some of the more common ones, um, how to usefully, I guess, respond to some of those things, um, how to identify when it might be, you know, uh, touching a little bit on good faith, bad faith arguments. Um, and then, yeah, uh, because it's, as I'm sure anyone who has been online recently knows, there's a lot of, um, it, it's interesting in the age of information because there is so much information. How do you make sense of things? How do you, you know, I guess, deal with information mismatch? People like to throw around, we're going to, cover one of my favorite fallacies, which is the fallacy fallacy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and because what do you do if people are throwing out, well, that's an ad hominem. Well, that's tone argument. Well, this is this, this is that. Is it really though? Like, uh, and, and if it is, then what does that say about the argument that you're reading? Like, does having a fallacy in the argument just be like, boom, conversation over, whoever calls the fallacies first wins the debate um it's I mean, a little more complicated than that <laughs> are you sure though <laughs> never <laughs> i try not to be all right i found the thing just in the nick of time here's our list of logical fallacies you could it's in the outline uh since you probably don't have twitch pulled up and can't see you know i really gotta figure out a way around that but whatever mm -hmm. um yeah I have to figure yeah. out how I can have like the people who are guest starring with me see what everyone else is seeing and what I am supposed to be seeing. Once I get the seeing. desktop, once I get the desktop set up, then I should be able to run both. I'm sure that there's some way that we can do this without you having to like be logged into Discord and Twitch at the same time. Cause oh boy, that time yeah. delay. Anyway, yeah, um, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> so let's see. You touched on a few of them. Can I? Am I allowed to draw on this? Nope. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right, cool, I ruined everything. Um, you touched on 
let's see, ad hominem, which is, I can't draw on it. Cool. I did all that for nothing. You touched on ad hominem, which is over here on this one. Um, I think I heard you say, what was the other one? Slippery slope. Did you say that? Tone argument. <laughs> tone I, argument. I was, uh, I don't know if tone argument is on the list that, at least the one that's in the outline. I was trying not to go into too much detail. I didn't want to spoiler the lecture. Oh, no. <laughs> How dare you take my work away from me. Um, all right. Well, uh, I mean, obviously, ad hominems, everyone's favorite. So I'm going to say what ad hominem isn't, and then you can describe what it is. Here's an example of what is not an ad hominem. Here are all of the reasons that you are wrong, and also, because of those, you are stupid. Whereas an actual ad hominem would be, because you are stupid, here is why everything that you said is wrong. <clears throat> so, uh, well, I have to close this so I don't, like, throw my Facebook up all over the screen, but... Oh, wait, actually, I don't have to, but, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up some choice examples of some actual Facebook conversations. Um, but while I'm doing that, you want to cover the other two, like probably anecdotal, I think is another good one. And then. Well, and that's also one that gets misused a lot as well, because in the same way that the ad hominem, the problem with the flawed ad hominem is that if you're just calling someone a dingus, but you're not relying on that to be like one of your, arguments then it's not actually an ad hominem you're just calling someone a dummy it's you know if you're like well all of these things but also as an inside not using it to support my argument you suck then that's not an ad hominem a lot of times especially when debates get really heated there will be some name calling and you know that's not the best way to argue but another way that's also not the best way to argue is that hey your name calling ad hominem. A lot of the times it's not actually an ad hominem fallacy. Um, and what was one of the other ones that's misused a whole lot? Tone arguments. Um, that's basically when it's like, oh, because you're arguing from like emotion and because you're, you're so emotional, you're not arguing from a place of reason. Um, I, doesn't that kind of just like fall under the um, fallacy fallacy, except it's like the false fallacy fallacy? Kind of. Because like, again, um, with like tone arguments and stuff, unless you're arguing that their logic is invalid or unsound because of their tone, then it's like you can be emotional and also argue from a non fallacious place. It's just that, you know, it's it's kind of unreasonable, actually, to expect that every single, especially casual social media discussion will adhere to the same kind of, you know, rigor as an academic text. Um, and what was one of the ones that you were bringing up, Pamela? Um, <clears throat> oh, God. So, I mean, s straw man, I do love some straw man, but anecdotal is yeah, probably the one that I see the most. And to be fair, anecdotal is one of those ones that I think we all kind of have to fall back on, but most of us are able to be like, I know that this doesn't count, whatever, and then give an anecdote. But like anecdotal, um, I'm sure we've all heard anecdotal evidence, or as I like to call it, anecdata. Um, which is basically like, I have experienced this thing or I have heard about this thing and thus it is emblematic of the argument that I am trying to make. Like, um, whenever it rains, it gets real humid. And so I'm like, well, yeah, because every time I go outside and it rains, it's real humid out. And like, regardless of whether or not that is correct, which, you know, sliding into some fallacy fallacy in there, like that's not actual data. That's just me recanting a story. If I was to like have some tracking and be like, ah, yes, on these dates that I went outside, every single one of them, the humidity was high. You know, it's 36 out, but it feels like 39. That would be non-anecdotal evidence. Um, and I think we can see just by that example why there is sort of like a fallback to it in casual conversations because we're not normal, sane human beings are not keeping notes about what the weather was like outside under normal circumstances. Um, and so it's sort of like, you know, 
anecdotal evidence becomes like de facto regular type evidence in a lot of these conversations. Um, well, and a lot of times too, a, a discussion isn't a formal argument. It could just be people sharing data that even if it's anecdotal data, as long as it's understood to be such, then you're just which we'll uh, come around to later at the acquire information stage of information literacy and fluency. So I'm just going to touch on this because when I was I was trying to pull up this example as the example argument that I'm referencing here, I came across another one, and I'm not going to post it because it's very incriminating for who wrote it. But there is a I don't know what formal fallacy this is, but I like to call it the you're the one argument which is basically, no, you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, here, uh, I'm, uh, woof. How do I pull this into an abstract way? Let's just say that someone, uh, was arguing about someone who may or may not be someone that we all are aware of. And if we're not, then we have bigger problems. Um, and uh, they're arguing that in spite of what is being said, this person is not in fact a good leader and has done nothing um, that fits with uh, you know, arguments that have been made that he has done certain things. And then the rebuttal to that, sorry, the, the conclusion of that is essentially, I hold you accountable and complicit in these false arguments. The counter to which is, no, I hold you complicit and, and, and accountable to them. And that's 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 the you're the one argument and uh i see it a lot actually um to be ageist out of boomers <laughs> well and that can also be kind of what about is um as well like well sure this might be a problem but but what about this other thing that's an issue and maybe what about that other thing it could be the issue that it's not necessarily that that doesn't deserve to be discussed but when it's used in bad faith to derail an argument then you know you're probably not arguing from good faith oh yeah do you want to talk about good faith i'm going to show this little example first um yeah sure of a classic straw man uh <clears throat> Um, well, when it comes to, I guess, you know, good faith and bad faith arguments, it, a lot of it comes down to, um, but it isn't limited to, what are your goals for the, for the discussion? I see a lot, especially on stuff like Reddit, where the goal isn't to have a productive meeting of minds where everyone leaves the discussion, you know, more enlightened and, you know, well-rounded a human being than they entered into. No, it's, I want to win. I want to win this fight. Why does it have to be a, a you know, and, and then you start to see a lot of bad faith arguments because it's not so much a, how can we share information? How can we have um, a, a discussion, whether it's a formal discussion, more typically it's a casual discussion. Um, and then, oh gosh, I, I lost my train of thought a little bit. Um, That's okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, but basically, um, when, a, when someone enters in an argument with the goal of winning, unless you're like at a debate club or, I mean, a, I'd say even this would apply to a lot of academic stuff. In a good academic argument, the goal isn't to win. The goal is to be as consistent as you can to make sure that your logic is sound. And if it turns out that your argument is flawed somewhere, then in good faith, you would want to know that so that you can refine your, your own um, argument so that you can both join together in a mutual you know, journey to truth. Well, whatever that might be <laughs> and that is that is usually the difference between like two people arguing and, and two interlocutors uh which is a super cool word that i am not going to explain because it's too cool for you kids but uh, when somebody says i'm having an argument most of the time what they're talking about is they're yelling at someone and they're yelling back um but uh, back in my day, when we were having arguments, we were throwing around evidence and like counter uh, counterpointing one another until we reached like the. You guys ever play Phoenix Wright? <laughs> the <laughs> at the end of the first game, like not even at the end. I think it's like the second to last case. Like uh, Wright and Edgeworth like team the fuck up 
because they're not actually two people arguing against each other. They're two people trying to cut the facts down into what actually happened. Um, and that was, you know, the whole spirit behind the game is that the law is not just a, or a prosecution rate. It's the truth. And also there was some really hot lady with a whip. Oh, Von Karma. Okay, so... <clears throat> I wasn't able, I, I was trying real hard to find a good straw man in these examples, but these are a fucking mess. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to save these specific comments for a little later on when we have like enough under our belts to be like, ah, yes, here are all the problems that is happening in this over here with this thing. Um, instead, let's skip forward a little bit and talk about, um, let's see. Oh, uh, actually, golden mean fallacy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I don't. There's a couple. We're already like 20 minutes in, and there's so much to cover. So the fallacy of the golden mean is basically like, well, one person says that the sky is blue, another person says that the sky is red. So clearly, the sky must be purple. You know, you can't just Seems legit. Be in the... Yeah, you can't like. It's good to be able to consider all of the arguments, but the, even if the truth is complicated sometimes, it doesn't always mean that the way to find it is by going right in the middle. If someone says something that's, you know, fairly well reasoned and someone says something that's absolutely nuts, you don't want to meet halfway, you so, know? it's. I think that also plays into a thing that will be hammered in a little bit later on, but like um, the weight of an argument is not set as an even field. Somebody saying right. something and somebody else saying something, these two things are not equal, um, which we will understand in a little bit when we talk about sources and credibility. But yeah, exactly. If somebody's like the sky is red and another person is the sky of blue, um, you kind of got to look at what they're, you know basis of information is there and also like just as like a quick like math thing if you're taking a golden mean you need to have more than two sample points to really get a mean <laughs> otherwise you're just picking the middle point between two things that's not a mean it's just mean <laughs> i think this could also segue into one of the examples we were going to bring up as well is for example oh they'll this is segue quite nicely into a couple things, like the creationism <laughs> argument, Woof. where you have, well, here's all this body of, of evidence and data and scientific consensus as to, you know, the evolutionary laws. Oh, I forgot my colors. And then on the other hand, you have, no, the earth is 6,000 years old and dinosaur bones were used, you know, to test our faith or whatever. I, it's been a, <laughs> a long time since I was racing that stuff. I don't even want to. So the, but then sometimes you'll find this supposed middle point of, oh, well, old earth creationism. And here's all these reasons why, well, we can't exactly ignore all the data over here because that it, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but maybe, maybe the world can be really old. And if we look at things in a certain way, then maybe it can be interpreted that the world, eh, maybe it's it's old, but but evolution still, you know, isn't true. God made it. Um, and this could perhaps be an example of a straw man. But the thing is, I'm not trying to say this is what they actually believe. I'm trying to say, like, there's a lot of arguments well. that go into them, and I don't think that they hold a lot of weight but my goal here isn't to be like this is what creationists actually believe <laughs> i'm i'm using that as an example and a demonstration of why the golden mean doesn't necessarily mean me in the middle and that could also potentially be an example of a bad faith argument because Ooh. in that example a lot of times and i having come from a fundamentalist background myself i have a i was I, I used to believe that kind of stuff. So I'm not just throwing shade over here. Like It's okay. You can do both. This is, <laughs> this, the science so. stream is not here to be balanced or to be fair. <laughs> we are here to be angry and sometimes drunk. So, yeah. But yeah. Fuck so, fundamentalists. Go on. Yeah. No, it's not the truth. <clears throat> um, but so, yeah, it, it, that's 
really an example of you come to the conclusion and then you try to find whatever facts you can have to support that conclusion before actually being like, well, wh where is all the evidence and where does that take us? Hi, you know, you're I'm Carl trouble. Poplar and I have opinions on falsifiability. <laughs> Um, yeah, Hi, I'm Ken Ham, and I have opinions. <laughs> um, for for those of you who aren't aware, which is literally everyone in the audience, none of you know anything. Uh, Carl Poplar was a funny little man who lived in a funny little hole out in the Shire, and he had some thoughts very specifically about Freudian psychology and, um, well, communism as written by uh, Papa Big Beard. Uh, so I forget what he was, what was, what the other side of that argument was, but basically falsifiability. Um, Poplar essentially was saying that there are. Is, is it? I think you're trying to Doppler his name. Oh no! It's just Popper. It's, it's Popper. Okay. <laughs> I like Poplar better, but whatever. I kind of like Poplar. All right, so Popper, which is a worse name than what I was saying. Um, yeah, basically he was like, okay, here's. Here is why uh, um, I don't fully understand his arguments against com uh, communism because the, I've not read the Communist Manifesto and I don't know how their interpreting of history works. But as far as Freudian psychology, his big arguments there was like, yes, Papa Big Beard was Marx. I was going to call him Papa Smurf, but I thought that would be a little bit too much <laughs> on the Smurf and I didn't want to Smurf it up for everyone. So... Um, Freudian psychology, right, is like, essentially, I am Freud, or a Freudian, and I'm listening to what your dreams are. I have already decided what they mean, and I am now going to hear what you have said and make it fit into that. Because, I mean, like, let's be honest, I, if, if, you're, if I've decided, okay, you, you know, hate your mom, and you're like, oh, I had this dream, like, literally everyone does, where I'm in the backseat of the car, but I still have, I'm still trying to, like, drive or whatever. Ah, yes, that's the loss of control, where your parental unit is this car that's taking you on a ride, and you don't have a choice, and, and desperately you're grappling at. And, like, you see how that's, like, um, a sort of... <laughs> hang on. Like, how can you prove that that's not true? Exactly. Like, how, how, could, you... how could you ever... <laughs> find a thing <laughs> that you could make fit into your own life. That would be weird um, to like ascribe to such things, but also like super fun. There are fun, there's actually, um, I, I forget what it's called, but there is a school of thought to be able to use those uh, things that you fit into the, uh, that you fit the evidence into versus fitting uh, your thing around the evidence or however I'm supposed to say that. Um, that it's it's a cool little like um, way to get your brain thinking of like how to come at problems by forcing it into a certain like mode of thought. I'm off topic. This is not thinking. This is not thinking more good. Um, anyway, yes. Yeah, so the falsifiability thing is basically like you need to yeah useful delusions. That's <laughs> that's a good term for it. You, <clears throat> You need to be able to present things that can be proven wrong for something to be good science. It has to be falsifiable. I don't even think it was good science. I think it was a little bit more fundamental than that. I think he was talking more about like, um, well, bleeding the into... The nature of truth itself. Yeah. Like a real epistemological that, kind of stuff. Thank you, epistemology. I don't remember my ologies very well other than biology because <laughs> it's all I've been doing lately. Um. But yeah, so in as the counterexample, right, is I think he was actually using um, the theory of relativity, which was a hot topic at the time, um, as a falsifiable claim. Because it's like, this is a thing, and if it works, we should see this. And if it doesn't work, then we won't see that. And so now let's try it. You know, either if, if we don't see the thing, great, we've proven it doesn't exist. If we do see the thing... We have not proven necessarily that it exists. We have just proven that thus far it is not false. Um, and that is, is kind of coming back to like, um, oh, coming back to, I haven't talked about it yet. We talked about this last night, but um, that the idea, I have to stop fidgeting with this. The idea that um, there you can't argue on equal grounds all of the time. I guess sort of like the which argument has more weight, but like uh, proving a, positive 
is really, really hard. And proving a negative is really, really easy. Oh no, I lost Tucker. <laughs> um, so it's really easy to disprove something basically. Um, and it can be very difficult depending on how you're coming at things to prove a positive thing such as like, um, well, I can't even think of a positive that I would want to prove. Uh, but I mean, it, you can you can kind of see how it is easier to be like, um, I have this thing that I have claimed because I'm a good popper student and I have presented an idea with falsifiability, uh, i.e. the sky is not purple. That is easy to prove. You go out and the sky is not purple. The sky is blue is in theory a lot easier to prove than you would think right because you go outside and you're like ah oh, yes that's blue um but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to oh thank god you're back okay <laughs> yeah sorry about that it froze <laughs> uh i was trying to give examples of like proving a positive and proving a negative and then i just sort of went on a tangent about blue and purple skies and i think i fucked up the example uh do you have a better example <laughs> um no, but um, in the interest of time, because we still need to get to some of the other stuff down here, I know a big thing as well was the misuse of jargon and gish gallops. Oh, um, um, actually, as as just as like an aside, this is going to be, I think, probably another three or four part unit because okay. just in like talking about this stuff, I've already had like 800 other things that you guys should know. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to condense into just one hour. I think I I know I promised everyone that I would like shit all over some Facebook articles, um, and I will do one at the end of the episode. Um, but we're really gonna get into like the majority of that stuff probably next week or the week after, um, depending on how quickly we get through this material. But as far as as this goes today, let's just keep it to a strict like overview of overview of all this stuff and then we'll break into the okay. three main segments in detail in the following weeks. Yeah, I think you want to do it so that just the first bullet point um the basics of logic is what we cover here and then maybe for the other ones we could do um like how to determine if a thing is not a dumb thing and <laughs> All well, yeah, no, stuff. see, that's what I'm saying is we'll just do a brief overview of everything that I've written on this outline and then okay. we can get into details on them anyway later because that's what we wanted to do in the first place. But I think at this point we've covered pretty much like the, the logic-y sort of things. Um, let's, I guess let's, let's touch briefly on like information, okay. fluency, accuracy, whatnot. Okay. Uh, if you want to gush about that for a second because I know that that was... Yeah. A thing you had opinions on talk about I was the very excited oh sorry you do your thing and then i'll get to the abc no tell me what to talk about oh um just just cover basically w how to be fluent in information what to be like what are the like telltale signs that this is in fact information and it is not just garbled oh actually no back up you were going to talk about jargon and shit real quick do that and then we'll oh yeah because the there thing. were a couple other ones on the notes i don't know how how much we want to get into them and this is more still from the first section um under i guess our little bullet point of general obfuscation misuse of jargon um, is something that's frequently used in bad faith. It can be difficult sometimes to identify if an argument is flawed because sometimes it relies on a like strict theoretical academic understanding of things. You see this a lot in, um, oh boy, like Time Cube. Or, well, I mean, Time Cube doesn't get into so much detail on it, but I, for, I forget the guy, but you'll see this a lot in bad mathematics where it's like, no, I've proven that P equals NP, or I've proven that there's no such thing as limits. And when you really look at the arguments, eh, it, it's reliant on a very unique and non-standard understanding of the scientific or mathematical or logical consensus to put it in the kindest terms it was very but kind. the problem is <laughs> yeah the problem is unless you have a higher level understanding of some of these things like some of the new calculus arguments well yeah nope this this looks like math this sure looks like math to me 
um, oh, well, yeah, it certainly seems to be reasonable that 0.999 repeating doesn't equal one. <laughs> oh that seems God. very intuitive. <laughs> But you unless know, you're a Pentium intuitive... two processor, circa 1990 something, <laughs> right? <laughs> two plus two equals four, except for particularly large values of two. <laughs> um... <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have to be careful um, when someone's acting like a, an authority on an obscure topic that sounds very scientific, but a lot of times these can things can be just there it's in many ways um uh an argument from authority that is they're trying to set themselves as this authority because they are using these jargon terms but they're used incorrectly so neither the authority holds weight nor does the argument itself as as it comes down to it oh and that gets so interesting it's very like a lot you'll see that in, in flat earth stuff too like a lot of times people can be really genuinely clever about some of the experiments that they construct and it can take a lot of like actual like legit engineering to do this stuff the problem is they're arguing from a conclusion so even if they raise you know even if they kickstart twenty thousand dollars for a special isolated like um oh gyroscope thing Oh yeah, th this is a really well put together experiment, but the experiment ended up invalidating their claims. So then the problem happens when they're like, well, the experiment was wrong. Yeah, obviously. Um, I didn't get what I but want. Yeah, <laughs> like, wow, what you know, what a smart person to to be able to come up with all those things. Well, well, you know, intelligence well, isn't a linear thing. It is not. <laughs> uh, we we there he died recently, but there was a literal brain surgeon who did not believe in evolution. That was yeah. a thing that happened. Speaking of jargon, um, I have thrown off what is the most fire of meme. I know you can't see it, but it's the, you know, when, uh, you know, I'm just, the simulator. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to let that linger there. But yeah, that is uh, an example of like fucking using jargon to like throw up a, a smoke screen. Because uh, let's be honest, nobody knows what quantum physics is. Uh, and the word quantum is not what you think it means, unless you were Jonathan, in which case you know what quantum means. I mean, it's really not a hard word when you think about it. <laughs> okay, put that down so I can see more of what uh, Dan's saying over here. Equivocation by technicality. I don't know what, what when that was posted, so I'm just going to move right along. Um, so, okay, jargon aside... Uh, I wanted to touch real quick back on the bad versus good faith. Um, oh yeah, uncertainty. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the uh, well, uh, a bad a bad faith um, argument. I cannot properly define, um, but I can tell you what a good faith is. Uh, a good faith is basically assuming that all parties involved are both being truthful to the full extent of their knowledge are willing to have and think about this debate and uh, and are not like you know there are no ulterior malicious purposes here everyone is here for good reasons i have faith in that this is a good faith argument um explain bad faith <laughs> um yeah bad faith would basically be um the goal isn't to come together in discussion and pursuit of the truth. It's more like someone might have an agenda and um, not that it's necessarily wrong to have an agenda, but it can lead to bad faith arguments if the argument itself is only a smoke screen for what they're really trying to say, um, where there there's no um, honest engagement, there's no willingness to um, challenge one's own beliefs or actually um you know grapple with the the evidence presented however maybe we can go into not even wrong from this i was gonna hit gish galloping and then make to gish, not even gish wrong. galloping okay yeah no because no, gish galloping is a fun one well I mean, it sucks but it's it's a fun word <laughs> it's for also, a bad thing it's a fun thing if you're doing it um not if you're having it done to you i but it it, it is definitely one of the more common things I've seen, at least in bad faith arguments. Oh, yeah. um, <clears throat> gish galloping is basically source vomit. 
Um, it can come with the jargon misuse. It can come with a lot of like real fun stuff and we'll get into not even wrong in a second. But um, if you're having say a bad faith argument and as you mentioned, it is very hard to refute point by point everything. So your tactic is to then load up a gun and spray the playing field with points. Some of them matter, some of them don't, probably none of them do, but there are so many there in such a short period of time, uh, for some values of short period of time, that it is functionally impossible for you to address all of them. And to do so would derail your own argument anyway, because at that point you're not making your argument, you're just cleaning up a mess that someone has made. Um, that is what it I- takes yeah. I mean, that's it, what... It takes... <laughs> go Sorry, ahead, go I ahead. I thought you were done. I thought you were done. Um, it takes much less time to present a claim than it does to refute that claim. And it may not necessarily be in bad faith, but, you know, if you are going to argue in good faith, then be aware that you're not just kind of machine gunning points because that doesn't really give any of those individual points, even if they are well-grounded, the time that's needed to focus on them um and when it's used in bad faith it's frequently used to confuse and to uh take up time and to be like especially if you have like you see this even in timed formal debates like gish gallop i think it might have been it was um, named after the guy who was who used yeah, that gish so word gallop gallopson i believe no it was uh dwayne <laughs> dwayne gish um it was coined by uh, Eugene Scott apparently but it was it was a creationist who Eugene yeah. uh, Dwayne Dwayne Gish was just like oh yeah if god isn't Dwayne, real Dwayne the rocks are not older than 6000 years old Gish <laughs> It's perfect and it just slides right off the tongue Um <laughs> uh I I can't I can't find like the actual example there but yeah um it is basically just like you know if god isn't real then explain this atheist and then it's like the full like textbook from you know the discrete mathematics and then he's like please do it quickly i have a test on monday that is sort of gish galloping this is also not to be confused though with um actual sauce um <clears throat> if anyone's ever read an academic paper i don't know if you have tucker you might have like glanced at one once um there are a lot of sections that will have that parenthetical documentation and then a fuck ton of things in it. Yeah. That is not really gish galloping because a, they're all important and it's a little different when you're writing a paper too. You're not like, it's oh. very different when it's like live versus paper. Yeah. And you also see really frequently when they're bringing that stuff up, they'll be like, and here's the point, but in parentheses, but this is actually a really big thing, so we're not going to cover that here. I Beyond just wanted the scope to of this paper. I'm academic, and I get really excited about things, and I wanted to include it in my paper, but we're just going to set it aside. But in the, uh, in the debate or argument context, um, that is still an okay thing to do, to be like, I have, you know, I'll, I'll link them in the doobly-doo or whatever sort of thing, where it's like, I, there, I, there's evidence for this, and there's a lot of supporting things to my point, and like I said, it's beyond the scope of this paper right now, but it's like right there. Right. You should really check it out. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually about to do a you should really check it out um, by way of transitioning to not even wrong. <laughs> do you want to read the quote from Billy Madison? <laughs> oh, did I write this down? Where was the? Oh, I don't know if I put the quote. In All right. I, I can bring it up real fast. I have oh, it. I have it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let me just first say. Not even wrong is when you have said something that is so far beyond the realm of anything that should or can make sense that it isn't right, but it's not even wrong because it's nothing. And it's certainly not falsifiable according to Popper. Not, it's not even like positive. It's not even viable. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I I had one of those little. Uh, sentences pulled up that your brain is like this is correct grammar but grammar but my i'm having a stroke because this isn't real and i can't find the even to as far as one might sort of oh, thing does nobody <clears throat> even so far as to be <laughs> yes yeah. yeah i mean that's not even wrong it, that's not even anything but okay the the quote here um and this is from billy madison is what you have just said is 
one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no paid points, and may God have mercy on your soul. And that is <laughs> the the uh, uh, basically the the creed of the science stream. Um, we, we award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Um, or just like it it never even at any point addressed the the main point it was trying to argue or refute and everything that it said it never came anywhere close to or using any it, it was something but it sure wasn't an argument yeah you definitely something happened there and we all got to witness it and we can't take it back now um so the two Okay, let's do the three layers here. There is um, a correct argument, a wrong argument, and a not even wrong argument. A correct argument would be something like 2 plus 2 is 4. A wrong argument would be something like 2 plus 2 is 22. A not even wrong argument, and I will just read verbatim here, would be something like 2 plus zebra plus the pi root of glockenspiel over the suffusion of yellow to the quantum power is equal to homeopathy working and <laughs> yeah i mean that's not even wrong there are like <clears throat> there is a, a similar phenomenon that is close to not even wrong and you can even respond to it with that but it is not not even wrong um uh when you make an argument that is a true argument that is unrelated that is technically not even wrong it's just not even related um, not even wrong very specifically uh, refers to something that is nothing that is just vapid words that have no connection to anything and not words that do mean something just not in the scope of this paper a confirmational of, change occurs one of the reasons why not even wrong could be a problem is because in trying to engage with not even wrong, not only can it lend um, legitimacy to the not even wrongness, but it also will just take up time and serve as a distraction for the things that could be not right or not wrong. It's it's um, like the pigeon thing, or it's like, why don't you play, play chess with pigeons? Because they'll knock all the pieces over, shit all over the board, and claim to have won. Like, so not engaging with not even wrong arguments is kind of like, don't play chess with pigeons. It's not worth anyone's time. Unless you're just trying to have, have yeah, I mean, some lull. Because sometimes it can be really fun to just untangle not even wrong. Because, oh, it's... it's, it's, um, it's a fucking time, huh. time cube, right? Time cube, <laughs> yeah. We should, you should post the... Excuse me, you should post a link in the Q&A to Time Cube, just so that everybody who hasn't already can enjoy it. <clears throat> Sorry, it's all this cancer. Um, there, There's a information fluency thing that I was going to do a brief cover on, uh, but I think I'm just going to sum it up with the... Uh, mm, nah, I'm just going to glaze over it all together. I, just, I don't like how corporate it looks. Um, However, yeah, it's probably it's probably best to just uh, read over it because I don't want to include, especially if it's corporate. We want to be careful about those copyright violations. Oh yeah, true. I, didn't I could make a I could make a, a a graphic for that if we want to go into it more next time. I mean, I, I summed it up with the ABCs: angry because you can't articulate what you're thinking well enough to talk about it, which is the main premise of the thing, um, in a very roundabout way, but. If we're going to do numbered lists real quick, I am, I'm going to touch on what I think will be the main topic of uh, the week after next or the week after after next, uh, depending on how quick we get through the actual detailed material. Um, the What I like to call how to determine if a thing is not a dumb thing. Um, <laughs> it basically comes down to uh, checking for accuracy, authority, currency, and coverage. And brief overview of that. Um, accuracy... I, I shouldn't have to explain, but you know I will anyway. Uh, it, you're you're basically checking a thing in let's let's just simplify it down to two 
uh, sources, right? Just to double check with another one to see if they have even a s briefly similar account of the events and that, you know, the one is not just like wildly different from the other so that there's at least like some accuracy as in this is near the mark that should be talked about. Um, authority, that's, you know, who whose source is this? Like says who, right? Like, um, oh, you see that a lot with some of the fake journals, like mm -hmm. the American Associations of Pediatrics versus like the Pediatricians American Association. That a lot of those things are intentionally confusing, so as to like borrow from the credibility of actual, um, like legit organizations. Oh yeah, um, and uh, a, a lot of there's woof <laughs> some. Some places are pretty good about like being out in the open, but just trusting that no one will check because no one will check. Um, like, okay, The Onion, for example. <laughs> the Onion <laughs> makes zero claims that anything is happening is true, and yet people still will read it and just assume that it's true, even though it's The Onion. <laughs> um, Hate The Onion. Um, and also, like, on the other end of this, like, Snopes, right? Uh, Snopes is not 100% reliable, but people, just like people are like, The Onion, this is obviously false. People go to Snopes and like, well, this is obviously true. Snopes still is better about it because they will list, like, who is the person who checked into this, what are their credentials and whatnot, but you still have to keep up with it. You can't just Google the, the thing on Snopes and be like, I'm not even going to read any further. Obviously, this thing is false. Uh, and I think there was actually something that Snopes uh, did that was really cool because they say we're like we're a source and we we like to think of ourselves as a very useful source but we don't claim to be the ultimate authority on things we try to gather as much information as we can and they've actually posted I think it was as an April Fool's thing <laughs> one of them uh, one of my favorites was like Snopes had claimed is true Horses are never actually used in TV shows. It's just zebras that are painted because they're easier to work with. Yes. It's like, is this true? Yes, it is. And then they had some, you know, bullshit argument for like, yeah, every horse you see in a TV show is actually a zebra in makeup. And then people got real mad about that because, you know, Snopes, you're supposed to be better than this. And then at the end, they're like, this is why it's really important to double check your information, even when it's us. You know, if something sounds absolutely ridiculous, you can't just be like, well, okay, Snoop said it. And even though it violates any kind of like um, common sense, I'm going to discard that common sense in favor of, you know, making that claim. So, a good source will be aware of their own biases and will, I mean, it's, again, it's good to make sure that the sources that you um, refer to are reliable authorities on, on things. But at the same time, yeah, yeah, just be in good faith. Be be aware that, you know, n nothing's perfect and... Uh, follow up on the citations and references and they're so off. Jonathan br brings up a good point um the appeal to authority um i mean yeah that's that this is a loophole through the um what the second point that i got to the authority one um that's like the the false articles or whatever um do that a little bit where they're like obviously credible because look we have this this title and as long as you don't look too too you know closely it looks perfect um in a further out sense like yeah you can be like well this is true because i heard it from snopes or this is true because like i heard it out of my doctor's mouth even though he doesn't believe in evolution <laughs> um, just because there is somebody who is ostensibly an authority on a thing does not make their arguments any more correct uh if it is not in their subject of research right you can yeah, especially outside of because you see the appeal of uh, appeal to authority especially misused when someone is an authority in one thing but then claims authority in another like yeah. with a bit person amazing brilliant genius you know um neurosurgeon 
but does not have the authority to make the claim, say, for, you know, evolution. It's just, um, that one bothers me specifically because you have to learn evolution to get into bio yeah. one. Yeah, well, and I think, too, um, don't fall into the fallacy fallacy because it's important in, you know, information literacy to know if you're using an authoritative source. Like that, you, you can't say because they're an authority, this is therefore true, but you can say, well, they are an authority for these reasons, like this follows the consensus, this has a, this source has a good reputation, um, this source is well known to know these issues, especially sometimes, you know, better than the, like, if, if I'm going to make medical claims, I won't make them from my own understanding i'll try to reach and research you know people who obviously know better than i do right um so just using an authoritative resource doesn't mean that you're making the fallacy of argument from authority um especially if you're using it in order you're using that authority in order to vet the quality of your evidence versus you know just saying well they said it so it's true yeah, I mean that's that's what I heard. The internet, somebody wouldn't just go onto the internet and lie about something. <laughs> um, Who is that? So yeah, currency. This is this is um, sort of. Oh my God, who's calling? It's scam likely. Does that? Do I know scam likely? Um, <laughs> scamual likely. So this the currency sort of bleeds into the authority conversation we just had. Um, this is not like this kind of currency, but like the, oh, it just happened kind of currency. Um, when, say for- Is it recent and relevant? Yeah, it, well, kind of, yeah. If, but the, you know, cause there's, there's a little bit of a balance there, right? Um, yeah. If you're on Fizzorg, uh, not the Facebook part of it, because that's fucking clickbait now and I hate it, but like the actual site, um, and you go on there and you're reading an article like, you know, some new discovery in like muons or muons i forget what they're called i had to pronounce them rather um and you're like oh that's cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're reading this thing on these like new uh proposed properties of a thing you got to make sure that it is not so current that it hasn't actually been like verified as a thing and it is not just like raw data that people are now postulating on it needs to be just not current enough to be like actual stuff yet and not just raw data that is uninterpreted muons ah nice i was so close um uh but you also don't want like um well okay the freudian psychology thing right like yeah there's I've... actually I, you see this a lot in gender stuff oh yeah like yeah oh to genders because I took I took you know this stuff when I was in eighth grade in like 1906 you know oh okay God. we have a better understanding of biology now than we did before even if some of this stuff is cited from like even stuff like the APA uh, like the American Psychological Association and stuff our understanding of this of, of all of this has grown and changed over time and you can't be going around citing things from like the 30s and 40s without the context of everything that we've learned since then as though it's everything that we could possibly know about how a thing is right but there's also the consideration of, of you know state of uh that discipline or whatever um i don't know what i'm trying to say here like some things are no less true from like 1908 than they are now um, because there's not a whole lot to go from there. That is not true of most things, but like math is math dot gif. Like there are some mm. things that is, uh, that are, I'm. Are we going to have to have a thing on, on, on set theory and the, and the ZFC? No, uh, all, no, all it was not actual math. I was just doing a meme. Um, but like, I don't know. Uh, there hasn't been a great deal of um, advancement in. I can't think of anything. Maybe I'm wrong, but for some reason, hey, that like an argument in good faith. <laughs> for some reason, in my brain, I thought there were some things. There were some fields that haven't like 
really been able to advance beyond their current understanding of things for a while and that they're just like that is what we know is true until we discover something new um anyway my, my point is, is that you can use the old arguments but also by looking at the more recent stuff if the recent stuff is like hey turns out that still holds then it's more likely that the stuff that you're using even if it's not super current well yeah i mean i guess that was the overarching point is that current is somewhat relative um you don't yeah, want it, whatever it, the the newest hottest thing that is said you don't always want to go with that but you also probably want to look a little bit more recent than you know when our our parents 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 were in grad school um i'll back... fight you on metamathematics though please well, don't we i have to... no I horse in that race <laughs> <laughs> math can be whatever the fuck it wants words. to be. The only math that I care about is like how to calculate molarity, and even that I super don't care about. Um, and the last one is coverage. Um, this basically amounts to the amount of... Um, here's the thing I want to know. How well is it actually covered? Does this article just be like, this part right here is what I'm going to talk about, uh, even though this whole thing is what I care about? Um, versus does it look at this thing, but also all of the things around it? Like you need to have an appropriate scope uh, and you need to make sure that it is covered in, a, in an amount that is uh, both informative, but not gish galloping. <laughs> um, I, yeah, the TLDR on that list is just like, oh, she's gone again. The TLDR on this list is basically look at what is published uh, and double check it. See who wrote it. Does it like seem to hold up to literally any other source? Potentially more if you can like go look for them. Uh, and I actually to to TLDR it even further. Don't just read one thing. Look to see if anyone else has said the thing to get a better picture. If you just read one article, um, and you're like, I'm that's... sorry, I'm definitely gonna fix that before next time. That's fine. We don't need to see you anyway. Just kidding. Please don't leave me. Um, yeah, the don't don't just like read an article and be like, that's it. I now know enough about that thing to start making claims. Uh, read if you give a shit and want to share that. Go read a couple others. And if you're gonna post it on Facebook, uh, please, please for the love of God, do not just post some vague sentence in front of an article. Give it a TLDR because if you post an article that just has the title and all you say is, hmm, interesting, almost everyone is going to read the title and that is now what they know and not click the link and not do anything more than that. Please, this bothers me so much. There are so many people that I know on Facebook very specifically who do not summarize anything behind a link that has the clickbaitiest fucking title. Things like, you know, is, what was the, there was a classic example, the like literal reason I stopped <laughs> subscribing to I fucking love science like a year and a half ago or whatever. Um, and of course I can't even think of it now, but it was like, is blank some kind of blank question mark? And then they're like, you know that was the title of the link and then like their thing was like it really makes you wonder and it's like i've learned nothing and i refuse <laughs> to click your thing because i don't even know what you're asking about you see that on reddit all the time too like most people don't even click on it it's like then you have an entire thousands of comments that are only about what the title of the post says and it may have nothing to do with what it's actually linking to it probably doesn't. Usually. All right. I'm. I don't know how I want to do this. Um. Because I don't want to accidentally like. Dox anyone, so I think I'm just gonna copy paste, the text, even though it loses a little bit of something in that form. Uh. How do I Google Doc? Um. Basically, what I'm about to do is I'm about to throw. Throw, literally throw up something um sorry i don't know how well you could hear me with the, my microphone in my chin and um tucker and i are going to take a quick look at it and 
tell you whether or not we can trust I, it. I haven't seen what, what you're gathering here. So. I haven't either. I literally ganked this off of Facebook just now. Um, oh, woof. Wow, that is some formatting that's happening right there. Ah, clear formatting? Did that work? Yeah, it did. Okay. Oh my god, that looks so bad. Um, all right, so first things first, I'm just going to come out and say that this is, this is the sort of post that you might see from one of your older or more conservative relatives. Probably not one of your friends, because let's be honest, anyone watching this science stream is very young and very liberal. Uh, maybe not like pfft, young, but like, you know, younger. All millennials are children. We didn't get a chance to grow up. I can't get this text to look not terrible. So I'm just gonna have to. Yeah, I don't even think. I mean, it wouldn't be bad to just kind of summarize it if you're going to want to make sure that it's anonymized anyways, you know. Oh, God, centered is even worse. Um, you know, I wanted to do this on the fly because I wanted it to not have, like, a, a pre-existing bias thing, but, like, woof. Um, I'll... <sighs> Fuck. I'll post it as a PDF uh, in the chat um, because I don't want to take up too much time with this, but... Tucker, I'm going to copy paste this into the uh, into the outline down okay. here at the bottom. Um and then we can go through that together. This is a link to Oh wow. Oh my. Right? Oh. Oh, that's one post, huh? Yeah, that's that's one post. And yeah, the thing up top is the source. Um, but let's ignore okay. the source for a moment. And I will pull this up for everyone else to see on Twitch. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. And this is after you took the formatting out, huh? Yeah, woof. <laughs> like there this is a good example though because there's so many particular points that the use of language is clearly constructed in such a way to shape you know uh, the per the reader's oh. opinions um yeah so <laughs> I, do you mind if I do some? Uh, I've are got you a, reading from it on the uh, Google Drive? Yeah, I, I was gonna say to I have it pull up. Stuff. Please feel free to highlight. I will be doing the same. Yeah, I no, will, no. This I don't is, know. I'll use a uh, red highlighter. I'm actually surprised that it's referred to in as its official name and not the more. Uh, let's see. Um. Right, so, I mean, just starting off, I'll go, I'll, you highlight, I will go, go blow by blow about what it is that you're highlighting. Um, yeah. First off, the starting off on this, when you read this on Facebook, you're going to see the AMAC first. Um, and it does not show up in this format when it is posted. It shows up with a little symbol that reads AMAC. Um, but it is in a very official looking capacity. So you look at it and you might think, okay, that's a journal article or whatever thing. When you actually read the name of the thing, the association, the association of mature American citizens, that probably sets off some sort of like light in your head as that's a weird thing to call people. I wonder what they're all about. Coupled with the fact that it immediately followed by must read with exclamation points already, I have gone into chainmail territory. Yeah. But I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt because somebody I know posted it and I feel like being mad, so I read a little further. I see things like how China quietly quietly inter, in, in, blah, 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 infiltrates American life and I'm like, "Okay, on the one hand, that sounds really inflammatory and kind of conspiratorial. 
On the other hand, China does have a lot of data collection going on at all times, and this is not a secret. So maybe I want to know more. This is not something that is wrong. It is not not even wrong, but I don't know how relevant it is. I start seeing things like COVID-19 being referred to correctly, uh, began in Wuhan, China. That tracks with what I know. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, why are you throwing down Donald Trump? <laughs> Because it's he's referred to as President Donald Trump, I see really frequently the name, the, the way that people are referred to, um, like frequently, especially in casual conversations, you'll see, oh, Trump or something. I found it a lot of times when it's President Donald Trump, that particular phrasing of the, the president in that full form is something that is often aligned with, okay, this is probably coming from a conservative perspective. Hmm. Um, a lot of times I'll see POTUS or I'll see Trump or I'll see like these other things. That's not to say that if the term president Donald Trump is used, it means it's conservative source, but I just see it really frequently when there's trying, there's an attempt to like amp up the legitimacy by using certain titles and full names and all that kind of thing. Um, I, and I, no, you, you go ahead and finish while I put your time cube link in the place where it was supposed to go. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't figure out, I don't have, um, we, we'll talk to, we'll talk about stream stuff afterwards and, and backends stuff. Um, but yeah, it's like on its own, it's, it's not incorrect. It, it, shouldn't be a red flag really but yeah in it, my anecdotal experience you know it is something that pings on the radar in terms of where, and, where's this coming from what does the writer believe i think that's actually a good little point to touch on too is that like if you have been around the block correct or not you do start to get little um I guess, Tells. yeah, feelings about the sort of thing that you're reading. And those can be used to a fair amount of effect um, in, you know, affecting to a fair amount of success, rather, in affecting what the reader is, you know, feeling or taking away from a thing. Uh, falling back on the onion, they do this pretty well. If you know the onion well enough, you can read it and you'd be like, this is clearly satire because I have now like picked up on like the way that these things are presented. Um, and you know, magical realism only takes me so far once I know that we are in a fictitious world. But if you were to initially read them thinking that the onion is just another like news source, it is written in the way that you expect to read news articles since there is a degree of like protocol and um, I guess format unification and whatever guidelines that come with these sorts of things um and so when you're picking up on stuff like that yeah that is your brain being like i only see these things in this way in these contexts and so now immediately i see president donald trump and i think this is a conservative news force um however to touch on that I have noticed that President Donald Trump is usually used the first time mentioned in an article in a general, like, the, as much as one can be uh, on more centrist, shall we say, article. They usually say President Donald Trump, and then after that, it's either President Trump or POTUS, depending on the thing. But well, yeah. if it's an official government source, it almost always uses that as well. Yeah. Because that's, you know, just how it's standard. If, if I may... Throw, Please. throw something else in here that we didn't really cover, but this is almost uh, sort of an example of that is dog whistling, um, which is basically when there's subtext in the way and what is said or the way that it's said that allows it to have like a level of plausible de deniability about what's actually being said. Um, for example, like law and order can dong, be dong. A, do a dog whistle as for you know, certain, um, certain political and, and I guess, uh, the, where it's like, well, what, what exactly does law and order mean? Like historically it's 
been used because who who would disagree with with law and order who doesn't want a lawful society who doesn't want an orderly society Me. but it can be used to <laughs> chaos reigns but it can be used to be like oh we need to get more like more people in prison maybe it means that there why do we need more police oversight maybe it means um you know well, is there really a problem with, you know, the, the school, the prison pipeline? There are all these kinds of little things that, again, the, the point of dog whistling is that there is an air of possible deniability. Not just that, it can also get people who might not be in on the dog whistle to be like, yeah, no, that, that sounds good. And on the surface, they might be sound, uh, supporting something that makes a lot of sense. But if you, I guess, get a little bit under the hood, there's some some bad bad acting bad faith behind sure. what is um claimed on on surface level i was not familiar with that term and now i am oh, is there an example of that here where is um, that in this let me see i don't know if there was there something i guess um it it wouldn't there's nothing specifically that I can see here right now that stands out as being a dog whistle. Um, I got there as a segue when I was like, oh, interesting, the, the certain phrasings that are used. Um, let me bring this up because honestly, this. Well, let's not get too deep thing. into it. We're just okay. Okay. we're just trying to hit the highlights of why this is or is not wrong and what it did right and wrong along the way. Yeah. Oh, let me let me read this out real, real fast from Wikipedia. Um, a dog whistle is the use of coded or suggested suggestive language and political messaging to garner support from a particular group without provoking opposition. So, yeah, it uses language which appears normal to the majority, but communicates specific things to intended audiences. So it's a way to kind of fly under the radar. Um, and and have like multiple levels of communication but with the intention that some of that at least one of those levels go unnoticed by the general mm. audience um this this one in particular uh has has me shook it Oops. oh states rights that's a that's a one of the classic examples of yeah, dog whistling states are all left we know states this. rights to what just in general <laughs> all right i tried to highlight that that was the wrong color to highlight but the despite her denial the answer is essentially yes what a weird thing to write in an article especially just as its own sentence by itself <laughs> it could i could i um <laughs> There, there's actually a really good example of dog whistling that has words. No, that let it go. Am... Let it go. Oh, okay. We're moving on. Write it okay, down, and on. we'll, we'll focus on. on it more later. Um, back to this article specifically, Tucker. Um, okay. When you see things in an article like, despite her denial, the answer is essentially yes. Um, and the previous sentence has her saying nothing. Um. That's, that's a little weird to me is that that somebody is like, oh, this person was asked a question and then there's no quote. It's just, you know, says that she denied it. And then the answer is actually yes. And then that it's also setting up this opposition where it's like we're going to set up this person as being a liar so that we can give you the real facts. Right. Um, well, that's a red flag to me. A little bit. Um mainstream american media outlets you'll see a lot of time mainstream media as and fake news is another thing that oh, can but, be like no this is putting on some airs of like officialness which is why they are sticking to things like mainstream or <laughs> small time media outlets yeah uh well again it's like it's not wrong and and neither of the none of these things like in isolation completely devoid of context would be necessarily false in and of themselves except for some of the like actual explicit falsehoods that are included right. um but it all adds up to contribute to a certain tone and a certain um 
image and argument that's intended to be conveyed. So, I mean, some things that it is doing fairly well here, though, is that it is, these are, for the most part, they've got a cohesive narrative here. There is a point that shifts very dramatically from one thing to just boop another. Um, but there is a, a, there is a clear through line. There is not, at least in this first, like, I don't know, third of, uh, of the article, there is not rapid shifting of attention and whatnot. We've got yeah. a thing that this article is about. I don't know if that changes later on. Um, also it's done a fairly good job at, uh, with well i actually no i just was talking about how it didn't do that whatever um this part this part i am i have feelings about uh name and then where they work that's good that's standard procedure i like that that is a thing that i want to see in things um what you need to do though is follow up like what is the daily collar news foundation because i hear that and i'm like well it sounds like a newspaper but it's a foundation so i don't know about all that i need to then like go look that up uh which i'm not going to do because i'm lazy sack of shit and i got a whole bunch of article here that we need to touch on um but Oh, well, whatever. We'll, we'll come to a, a consensus on whether this article is good or bad, even though clearly I have a bias at this point. <laughs> Having read a third of it, I'm already like, this is, I'm feeling a way about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I want to, there, there's a lot in here that is interesting. I'm also trying not to go too crazy so that my computer uh, doesn't crash Discord again. Hopefully that'll right. be fixed by next time. But All right, let's see. Uh quasi official media outlets with links to the people's republic of china um i don't know enough about what's going on in other countries to say whether things are official or quasi official uh if we're going to start throwing around words like quasi official though we have to take into consideration that just because something has a title doesn't mean that it is official in any capacity that matters the American Association of Mature Citizens. I'm looking at you. Um, like, what does that mean? Why, why would it be official? Why wouldn't it be official? What What is it something that makes it, like, it's a way to kind of, like, how can you really deny something being quasi-official unless you know yeah, and like in what more capacity? background information? Exactly. Is a, if, if we're to talk about, like, a quasi-official news source, is that, like, BuzzFeed? Um, cause like it is officially a news source, but we have like a sort of connotation with Buzzfeed of that it is presenting in a certain way and whether it's true or not, like this, perhaps the same could be said of all news sources. Um, so yeah, quasi official is a fun little term that means nothing in this context, but it does give a certain, like, it makes you feel a way about a thing. Whatever this media outlet is. Oh, it's not even news source. That's sorry. My brain is editing it. It's just a media outlet. How do you be a quasi official media outlet? Either you outlet media or you do not. My mistake. Quasi official is purely a pejorative term in here that means literally nothing um, except um, that it is involved with the Chinese government. <laughs> Well, and it's interesting, too, because especially going down um, and reading a little bit more, there's some stuff that I wouldn't necessarily disagree with in terms of, um, it, like, uh, poor encryption, privacy violations. So There is it, it, some stuff that is willing to touch on, but it's not really actually talking about that itself. Like, it's it's using that just to put an agenda around it. So that's part of the reason that I stopped scrolling at this article is because it's, yeah, it's it, doing a very interesting thing that I don't always see done, at least not, I'm not going to say it did it well, but this is a pretty good example of it. Um, the basic overview of this article, because I'm, you know, we're creeping up on an hour and 30 minutes now, so I'm just yeah. going to like fast forward to the end here. This article does a really good job of being like, this is biased. And I can definitely feel that there's a tone set here. And that's filtering out more or less anyone who is going to agree or not agree with this. If I was reading this on my own free time, I would have read two sentences in and been like, I'm out. However, 
if I got past those sentences because I'm like, yeah, this is my jam and I kept reading, in this meaty chunk down here, once I've already bought into what's happening, I now have things that look very much like quotable, uh, legitimate like bits of information that I can refer to. And I can even cite, yeah, this is from the AMAC, uh, which is... Um, it's an acronym, so you know it's official. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just a part of the AMAC Foundation since it's a Mac Foundation in 19-something. Because mature a citizen, I have to assume it was in 1900s. Let's be honest, none of us are mature citizens, no matter how old we actually are. That is true. Um, but yeah, the stuff in here, these are these are like fairly, fairly true to the extent of things. Like, yeah, um, the Heritage Foundation and all this crap. These are things that, again, to the full extent of my knowledge, check out. Um, but then it follows with the whole American audiences are being submitted to censorship, not our own censorship, but a foreign power censorship and a communist party censorship. Right. Which that's a claim <laughs> that has been that made. That is a claim. <laughs> and it's interesting because it's like I'm not denying, I wouldn't deny, you know, censorship in China, but at the same time, to claim that there is no American censorship, that there is no you know, organi organizations that are initializations or acronyms that have their own, you know, agendas and their own, you know, oh, well, we can't say this because that'll upset the donors or, you know. The donors! <laughs> there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. My billionaires! Um, so, I mean, yeah, this is... I, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's this part right here with the Confucius Institutes actually have little to do with Confucius. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know why that's there, but it pleases me that it is. Um, <laughs> the the conclusion down here uh, basically, well, in theory, sums up what the rest of the article is saying. And it's pretty telling for, sorry, I unhighlighted, it's pretty telling for this article. Um, that all of these things that you read about, uh, you know, corporations and the Communist Party and media and some guy named Panther. I don't remember what I saw. Uh, what was it? Peter Hansen? I don't know how I got Panther out of that. All of that shit boils down to this sentence, uh, run on as it may be, or at very least compound at the bottom here. Um, Essentially, you know, China bad and it's hurting the government slash environment of America because let's be honest, there's nothing outside of America except for bad guys. All of that. Yeah. And Go ahead. It, it's very much like, here's the bad guy. Don't look too closely. It, it, not to be a, but both sides, but it's like, yeah, Chinese censorship is, is an issue especially for people in China, as an American, American censorship is an issue. Um, even if it, you know, it- Especially to people in China. <laughs> and, and it also serves to like set up an external enemy so that you're not looking too closely at what may be more relevant to you in a day by day basis. That's not to say it's not an important issue, but at the same time, if you have, um, I, I forget off the top of the, my head, the name of some of the bills that have been being presented in, in, in past where it's like, oh, um, American tech companies have to build back doors into their um, technology so that our own government can access it. Well, you know, that's bad. Why though? It's, all, it's bad that <laughs> China has our information, but it's also bad that our, we're doing, you know, no no one should have that that's mine yeah it's it's um uh, and i think i see this a lot too is trying to make an enemy external um where it talks a lot about china without making a huge distinction between chinese citizens and chinese government it's all just and china it's all just china um china all the way down so it's i don't know that's 
uh, there's a lot to unpack there. And of course, it also goes, you know, where where's the distinction between the American people and the American government and who does what and where is where does the accountability lie? And yeah, great questions um, all what could be done with whatever power is had. But that's we're, we're already running like way over. Yeah, and we'll, <laughs> we will uh, blah, 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 blah. we will touch on all of that. At some point, this is just going to be a long one. I mean, in fairness, though, like, I don't know. I feel like this is not a bad uh, thing to expand on, even though this isn't what we would traditionally consider science with an exclamation point. Um, I still think that this shit is pretty fucking important, not just in today's world, specifically right the fuck now, uh, but, you know, to the scientific process. At large, also China. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, this article, other than some of the issues that we've brought up, there's some stuff in there that's, you know, okay, yeah, sure. But, you know, depending on where it's posted, this reasonable, you know, at least semi-reasonable front, what other articles am I now going to read from this source? Yeah, well, don't... How reasonable might those be? Might this be something that could be like, oh, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Now I have this association of, of legitimacy... And before you know it, let's, you're on bright <laughs> Let's just say that um, that article by AMAC is a diamond in the rough, and the other ones are not doing so hot. <laughs> More research needed. <laughs> but okay, to uh, closing notes here. Um, yeah, this is now going to be a thing. Uh, I think next week I just want to hit up a uh, brief cover on syllogisms and then the logical phallogy, uh, phallogy, phallogy his fallacies um after that i think we'll focus more on like what makes a good and what makes a bad argument and then yeah we should do more information fluency stuff and at the end uh, the the episode at the end of all of that i will we will very specifically like walk you through some examples and explain them for what we just did and on if we're breaking it up maybe we could fit inoculation theory and touch yeah, on that a little that's bit that's fine there. That's... I think it, I think um, it's important to like, especially for going the applied route. Well, now we know about all this bullshit. How do we counter all of that? And With there are ways. More different bullshit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like I don't know for this first episode, TLDR: Don't listen to Facebook. Wear a fucking mask. Wash your hands. God damn it. Now, so the patrons. I know everybody likes a good raffle. Um, and here's what I'm raffling today. I. I don't have it in my hands at this moment, so I just am showing you a picture of it. The graphic guide to logic, which you will receive and be able to follow along with in the next episode. But yeah. let's see who gets it. I'm gonna. I'm sure you guys all remember Goth Tom Servo here. <laughs> let's see who gets a thing today. It's coming. Any sec. Oh, it's detached. That's why. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. What to do? What to do, camera? I might have ruined it because I painted it. I don't know. Up oh, there it is. Okay, what do we got? Uh, hey, Andrea, you this that's an A, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's an A. Oh yeah, you can you can see it a little bit more when it's further away. It's just smeared. Uh, Andrea has won the graphic guide to logic. Um. And I will let them know that in a little bit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, whoops, that's not supposed to be there. If you guys have any questions or concerns or comments, join the fucking Discord. Because you should do that. I put, I bought a patron subscription to a robot so that this Discord could work. Fucking join it. I know you won't, but do it. This was, this is... That's five dollars a month, guys. Speaking of five dollars a month, join the patron. You can get the fucking raffle prizes, uh, the Facebook thing with the Twitch. Do those, uh, and uh, I don't know. Fucking ignore the YouTube. I guess I put these up after each episode, but I haven't like fucking uploaded any of the video edits to where they're like cohesive and make sense. So you know, fuck YouTube. That's why you gotta be there on the stream. Do the do the subscribe and the like and ring the bell, bop it, twist it. Punch that like button. Yeah, smash it. 
Just that fucking like button. You have no idea what it's done in its time. Okay, that's it, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna... Where's the thing? Uh, yeah, okay, bye. Oh, right, no, yeah, uh, message the Facebook or the Discord, um, with any examples of, uh, bad articles and shit that you want covered. Um, you have two weeks to do so, because it will be the third week upon which these examples are... I'll, I'll make a status about it. Okay, uh, everybody fucking good...